So this is the BMW M3 and in its fifth generation version dubbed the F80, this car represents a big change for BMW. For starters, BMW have been on a bit of a mission of rebranding a few of their models. An example of this is the 1 Series Coupe you might be familiar with. The new model that would have replaced the 1 Series Coupe has now been rebranded as the new 2 Series, leaving only the hatchback to wear the 1 Series name. And it's a similar story with the 3 Series. The two-door M3 we all loved and lusted over no longer exists as the M3. It's now called the M4, leaving the M3 to come only as a four-door, which from a business point of view probably makes sense, but from a heritage view makes none whatsoever. The exterior is all M as usual. You get these mean bulge arches which sit perfect on top of these weight optimised 19 inch alloy wheels. You get a black carbon fibre roof that lowers the car's weight and centre of gravity giving it an overall curb weight of 1520 kg. Behind you get four exhaust pipes with a bevel finish to them. And up front you get a power dome on the bonnet which gives a nice subtle hint to its potential. You get large air inlets which give optimum cooling in all conditions, at the same time making the front end look really aggressive. You get double slatted kidney grills which you'll only find on M cars and these razor sharp mirrors that play a key role in the overall design. Inside the seats dominate the interior. They're a one piece design with built in headrests and are made exclusively for the M3. They're wrapped in a beige leather with illuminated M badges above, which actually look stunning when lit up at night. The door cards and armrests are also wrapped in leather, with all the trimmings having a nice matte black finish to them. Onto the engine and BMW replace its high revving V8 for a more conservative 3 litre straight six. It only runs 10 brake horsepower more, clocking in at 425 brake compared to 414 from previous. But the biggest shock with the F80 M3's engine is the amount of low end torque that's now available, courtesy of not one, but two turbochargers. 406 foot pounds of it to be precise, which is over 100 foot pounds more than before, available from as little as 2000 RPM, which should make for a very unusual M experience, seeing as though torque is a department M cars have always struggled in. It's possible to hit 60 in 4.4 seconds, and will go on way past 155 miles per hour if de-restricted. BMW quotes that this car stands for unbeatable performance in technology, design and above all out on the road. So on that note, let's take it for a spin. Alright, so here we are guys, we're inside the cabin and uh, just before I start the review, I've uh, got two confessions to make for you new subscribers. Uh, first one being that this is actually my daily driver so in case you do go off and see some of my other videos and think oh this must have been a bias review I want to let you know now that this isn't a bias review everything's totally genuine I'm not being paid for anything this is just my view on the car the second one being that this has actually got a stage one remap on it too so you know it don't make a difference because all of my testing was based on the car in its stock form so you know you can trust everything I'm saying that this is a review based on the car being stock. So with that said, we'll start the review. The M3 is like a legend in the car world. It's been one of the most popular sports cars for donkeys. And it's a car that most brands envy and most probably hate with a passion. The reason I say this is because all you ever seem to hear in the media is how this car beats the M3 or this car's faster, or you know, even this is the new M3 Slayer. And all that tells me is that there must be something quite special about the M3 to be receiving the attention it does. So for starters, the M3 performs brilliantly at daily driving. This model in particular has adaptive suspension which means the dampers are always at work adapting to all kinds of road surfaces to give a smoother ride, which in return actually makes driving around town really comfortable. It comes with a 6 speed manual box paired with a clutch that is so much lighter than previous manual M3s. So when having to constantly change gears when sitting in slow moving traffic, trust me it isn't the end of the world. Steering wheel feels nice and light, really effortless, especially when set to comfort mode. And you get a really big turning circle which makes manoeuvring around town and parking up light work. The seats are nicely bolstered and actually remind me of the Vader seats from the E36 M3. They're heated and fully electric and standard and personally I think they're some of the coolest seats BMW have ever designed and when driving you feel like one with the car. On the steering wheel you get two buttons here that say M1 and M2 which you can assign two personalised driving styles to. 
So if you look down here, you get a combination of different driver modes, starting from comfort all the way to sport plus. So what you can do is maybe set the M1 button as your comfort mode, and then maybe set your M2 button as your race mode. You get BMW's iDrive system, which in the past has been known to be very difficult to use, but in the M3 it works a treat. You get this chrome circular dial located on the centre console, which actually controls the dash mounted LED screen. You can twist it, click it, and it even comes with a touch sensitive pad, so you can get really creative when typing in addresses. Into the main menu and you get a clean and very simplified layout. Media wise you get quite a few different ways to play your music. Obviously you get the old fashioned radio, CD player, auxiliary slots, USB slots. But for the coolest music feature you have to scroll on over to BMW online and at a small fee subscribe and you can get access to over 3 million songs. Which you can then download straight to the built in hard drive which is a must have for any music lover. For you people who want to take your M3 on track you do get tyre temperature sensors which is quite useful because the Michelin tyres that come standard with the M3 do take a little while to warm up. Also like the Nissan GTR and the AMG GTS I reviewed you do get a set of digital dials that can display your power and torque separately on the LED screen. BMW does quote the car will do 34 miles per gallon which you'll probably never see unless you're like me who drives on empty searching desperately every day for a petrol station. Tax for the year costs 295 for the manual versus 265 for the dual clutch transmission. Uh, servicing costs £310 for oil and filters. Uh, BMW quoted me £300 for tyres, obviously I weren't going to pay that, but it's to be expected obviously those sorts of prices, but we've all got a dodgy mate at a quick fit that will charge us half price. Uh, the tyres are lasting about four or 5,000 miles, you know, which, which is quite normal for an M3 driver. You know, maybe it will last you 10,000 miles if you drive like a granny, but you know, if you're seeing 10,000 miles in an M3, like why are you even driving an M3? Well, the M3 costs 56,600 pounds from new last time I checked, which is quite a lot of money for a car that most people will probably see as just a beefed up 3 series. But you know, when you compare it to its close rivals like the Lexus RCF, which is I think 60 grand new, and the C63, which is I think 61 grand new, that's when it's quite clear that the M3 is quite the bargain in its class. And it's really reserved in its looks, which might be a bit of a turn off for most people, which I can understand. I reckon you do get a choice of some angrier looking cars for the money, in my opinion. For those of you who don't want to stand out in traffic as much, but require something seriously rapid, the M3 is the perfect choice. You feel really off the radar when driving around town, not raising as many eyebrows, especially finished in mineral grey. But it's a really satisfying feeling knowing that you harness this level of performance in such a humble looking package. So down here is where the real magic happens. You can change the steering, fuel suspension, firmness, throttle sensitivity and traction settings which all have three modes. Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus. Traction control has a few too. You get MDM mode which gives the car a bit more slip if traction control is annoying you. Also, if you're brave enough, you can fully disable it too. So with everything set in comfort mode, the car feels really tamed. Put your foot down just a little bit and the traction light don't stop flashing, robbing you of almost all its power. This mainly happens at lower speeds when exiting corners or accelerating fast from a standstill. At higher speeds, it's not as bad, although if the road does get a little bit bumpy, the traction light will still flash away because running this amount of power and torque doesn't take much to spin the wheels. and. You tend to feel the throttle hesitate as power cuts in and out which can be a little bit annoying when you get that need for speed moment but it's always good to know traction control is doing its job. Steer is fairly light not offering the most feedback and the throttle when compared to Sport Plus feels really laggy and when pushing the car hard this mode isn't recommended. It feels like there's a bit too much play in the wheel when you do tend to feel slightly disconnected from the car but you know I'm talking about when you're absolutely hammering it here. For you guys who fear rear wheel drive cars, trust me when I say it, you guys will be shocked at the liberty you can take in this car. I mean, I'd be more than happy enough to borrow this car to my missus in the wet, having full faith knowing the computers will bring her back in one piece. I mean, it's still fast, still nimble, just does it in a way more safe and appropriate manner. And I still believe it's more than agile enough to teach its close arrivals a lesson or two. Switch traction control to MDM and everything else in sport, and the first thing you notice is how much louder the cars become. And that's because the car comes with electronic flaps that open only in Sport or Sport Plus. The car feels way more serious now. Every part of the car has much more life to it, more edginess. The steering wheel becomes a lot heavier, not just for the sakes of it, but offers tons more feedback. You 
can now communicate with the car. Everything's so predictable, you now know exactly what's going on with the chassis. The throttle's now sharper, allowing you to take corners with so much more precision. And with MDM mode now on, you can now accelerate out of corners a lot easier. Traction control still interferes, but it's 10 times better than before. The brakes have so much bite to them at the same time being really progressive. And that's because the calipers are now fixed to the axles. Four pistons up front and two in the rear, and are a massive improvement over the previous Gen M3. Gearbox also comes with a rev match feature, so just like what people do on track, when you down gear or match the rev, so it makes the gear changes even smoother and at the same time it sounds really cool when driving around. Put everything in Sport Plus and turn traction control completely off and probably wouldn't be a bad idea to go kiss the missus and maybe say bye to the kids because in this mode the car is no longer sailing along in autopilot the car is now in full manual mode and relying on nothing but you the captain no computers no excuses just a steering wheel three pedals and 426 brake horsepower if you do dare to join us very rare but stupid people you'll be in for one of the most fun but scariest involving drives you've ever experienced in this class when you put your foot down, the wheel spins so violently. The throttle now being this most sensitive setting reacts to the slightest brush of the throttle. If you do manage to make it out of second gear without you know, ending up in a house or a bush, you'll notice all the traction issues are now gone. You can now pin the throttle round bends like you wouldn't believe. The grip levels are ridiculous and I've never ever felt this brave in a rear wheel drive car. And it's quite scary because you feel yourself feeling untouchable on the road. Everything about the car feels razor sharp, way more focused, way more important than you could ever be. It's as if the car's been training all its life waiting for this one moment to impress you. The turbos haven't changed anything about the M3's character, apart from giving it way more oomph where it was really needed, which is obviously lower down in the rev range. If you're not the handiest behind the wheel, yes, this mod can catch you out at lower speeds, but once you get going, you can fly into bends. You're never left guessing how fast to take a corner. Because you receive so much communication and feedback from the wheel, it gives you more than enough time to let you know when you're running out of talent. It's always been a bit of a myth with rear wheel drive cars, especially the M3. Apparently they're dangerous and they just tend to just kick from the rear for no reason. I don't take this the wrong way guys, but in simple, if you're not a driver, I recommend you stay away from these types of cars, meaning rear wheel drive, because unfortunately to the person who has no personality, the M3 has something called character. And if you are a driver or claim to be a driver, go bloody drive one because you're missing out, trust me. A lot of rear wheel drive cars out there are more than capable machines, but the problem with a few of them is that they lack that vital bit of feedback to give you that confidence to power into those fast bends. You know, like how you would in a front wheel drive or a four wheel drive car. This latest M3 is the total opposite. That boost of confidence you wanted from a rear wheel drive car is here. Like, you will find yourself powering into bends faster than anything you've drove before. I'm not saying there ain't an element of danger when driving this car fast, you know, because I'll be lying. The car does have its moments and I'm always telling myself, chill Ricky, the car's rear wheel drive, like you need to chill, but it's exactly that what adds to the excitement of driving the M3 or any rear wheel drive car in general. It's like you're playing with fire, like poking it to see how it reacts. You know, you've got those speed nuts who like to brag they did 200 miles per hour down the motorway. That's just bollocks, man, it's easy. Go jump in a rear wheel drive car and a day you even try to do half those speeds of traction off, even though some of your favourite B roads. And drop me a comment below if you're still alive, letting me know just how much more satisfying it was, knowing you made it through the other end in one piece. That was a joke by the way. The steering wheel does feel overly heavy and the suspension becomes really stiff. And with traction control fully disabled, this mode isn't recommended for the real world. And should only really be used for track days and for those people with a couple of screws loose. But for me, I'm not going to lie, this mode's perfect for me. This mode unlocks the M3's full potential and this is the mode you have to use if you don't want anything holding you back when you get that RS4 moment. BMW offers one of the most rewarding driver's cars money can buy and the M3 provides you with all the tools you could ever need to become a great driver. And remember, the M3's basically two cars in one. It's really good at being a daily driver as I've tried to show you today and at the same time it's really, really fast on track. So obviously having both of these talents means there has to be a slight sacrifice in both departments. So yeah, you probably can find a car that's better at being a dedicated daily driver and you probably can find a car that would run rings around the M3 on track but I can't agree with the fact that you can find a car at this price point that offers this level of driver involvement and everyday usability packed into one seamless package 
And in fact, that goes for every BMW in existence, whether you're looking at a 120D or the brand new 7 Series. BMW always seem to offer the perfect combination of ride comfort and performance at a very competitive price. So that's the end of the video guys, that's my honest view on the M3. Uh, if you did enjoy the video please like share and subscribe and you know if you guys think i've been talking shite just drop me a comment below we can argue it out i don't mind whatever you want to do uh, another reason you guys might want to subscribe is because like i mentioned earlier this is actually my daily driver and i plan to do a lot of modification videos like uh, modding the exterior of the car and the performance and i will be dropping the first modification video in the next couple of days so yeah, that's about it guys. Uh, you've been watching Living Life Fast. My name's Ricky and I'll hopefully see you guys soon. So this is Volkswagen's latest super hatchback and it's called the Golf R. It has 300 bhp and is the most powerful Golf ever produced from the Spartanburg plant. Here we are guys, we're inside the cabin of the GTR and one of the first things you notice when setting off is